Welcome to another edition of the Time Flies Podcast. I am your host, Ariel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Team USA versus Team Canada, which is the first of many games as a warm-up to the Olympics. This year, we got the likes of LeBron, KD, Steph, Tatum, Drew Holiday, Embiid, Anthony Davis, as well as a slew of other players going to Paris, France to get the gold. Now, the game itself, I'm excited to talk about the game. I'm excited to break down what I saw, what I think we need to work on. But it might be a little bit of a backdrop as to what's actually been going on. So the first thing I want to tackle, I want to tackle Kawhi Leonard actually making an announcement that he's actually going to be leaving Team USA. And my thoughts about Kawhi Leonard in general are get out of here, kid. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not a Kawhi Leonard fan, man. I get it. When he's healthy, he's a top five, maybe even top three player in the league. We saw what he did in Toronto in 2019, bringing them to a championship. You can make the argument that KD tore his Achilles, Klay Thompson tore his ACL. So you can make the argument that if the Warriors had minimum Klay Thompson, forget KD, because KD was out. But you can make the argument that if the Warriors had Steph, Klay, and Dre, they still would have been able to beat Kawhi. But Klay went out with the injury, so whatever. That's neither here nor there. That's water under the bridge. Kawhi Leonard got the championship. Cool. But ever since he went to the Clippers and he went to the Clippers under the pretense of like, I'm only going to be coming to you guys if you're able to get another star with me. And he wanted Paul George specifically. Kawhi Leonard has not been able to play. Kawhi Leonard has not been able to stay on the floor for more than a week. Every season we go into every NBA season saying the Clippers are talented. When, when Paul George was still with the Clippers, the common saying was Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, though that tandem is a definitely a top five tandem in the league. And if they can stay healthy, yo, enough, enough. Kawhi Leonard, it, it's done, bro. It's done. You're injured. You're always injured. I don't know when you I don't know when's the next time you're gonna be able to. This past season was actually not bad. You did play a good amount of games. The load management was definitely on the back burner. There wasn't a lot of load management talk with you throughout the season. So you get two claps for that. But moving forward, no. I, and anybody, anybody that has faith in Kawhi Leonard, like, I need to see what you're drinking. Because based off what he's been showing you, I don't understand why you're going to put all your faith in Kawhi Leonard. And the LA Clippers, in the middle of this past season that just happened, the Clippers extended Kawhi Leonard for another three years. What are you guys doing? Kawhi Leonard, like I said in the beginning of this episode, Kawhi Leonard has not been able to stay healthy since 1974. What are you guys doing? Why are you putting all your faith in someone that cannot stay healthy for a full season? And then in the playoffs, when he's actually kind of healthy, he gives you two games. And the next thing you know, you get a report from Tim Bontes or you get a report from Ramona Shelburne telling you that he tore a meniscus. That exact same thing happened in this playoffs. He played in two games where you could tell that he wasn't right. And the next thing you know, he was announced that he wasn't going to be playing because I don't know what injury it was this time. I'm not sure if it was something with his thighs, with his knees, with his feet, with his back. I don't know, man. But after he exited the playoffs and then the announcement that Kawhi Leonard was a part of the Team USA roster, I was looking around like, what? Why is he part of the roster? when he was injured so going into going into training camp the training camp i believe started in the beginning of this week so the team has only had like four days of practice with maybe a couple scrimmages in the back of my mind i'm like and if he's not gonna last like how long is he gonna last and then next thing you know there's a statement being put out by team usa slash the la clippers saying that Kawhi Leonard has decided to not continue with team usa because he wants to focus on the season on the upcoming season and focus on just trying to be healthy for the la clippers Like, who did not see that coming? Okay, so that's the first part I want to get to. Kawhi Leonard, you're done, bro. I don't know why anybody thinks you're still a top 10 player when you haven't been able to stay on the court for more than a week. Now you know how I feel about Kawhi. Now, based off of that Kawhi Leonard announcement, then we have the whole Derek White being announced uh, replacing Kawhi Leonard. And ever since Derek White has been announced as replacing Kawhi Leonard, Jalen Brown took to his... Took to his uh, Twitter account, uh, posting, I think, a couple of tweets. The first tweet was, like, I think, three uh, curious faces. I think the, the emoji has, like, that, that magnifying glass uh, curious face. I think that's the emoji that he used. And then the second tweet, he, he actually added Nike. And he said, at Nike, like, this is what we're doing. And there's that whole talk about Team USA. They really want to be represented by Nike. That's why anybody else on the team that signed to not nike adidas under armor puma i don't know what other company there is reebok uh anta jalen brown is basically accusing nike of just playing politics and the reason why they didn't pick him is because he's not part of nike and then grant hill came out with a statement saying that his responsibility is to put the best team possible but (laughs) 
it's interesting because I get it. Derek, Derek White is an amazing rotational player, obviously winning the championship with the Boston Celtics this past season. Derek White, Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Like you can make the case that those are those are where the most the most important players on the Boston Celtics and is the reason why they won the championship. But if Kawhi Leonard is out, wouldn't you want somebody that's like Kawhi Leonard-esque to replace him? And that's where Jalen Brown comes into play. Kawhi Leonard, where he made his name was being a 3 and D guy. When he was healthy, when he was in his prime, he was regarded as the best perimeter defender in the league, but also being able to put, what, average 25 on your head. And Jalen Brown, you can make the case that he's taken over that mantle. Derek White, he's a very respectable. He's probably within the top five perimeter defenders in the league, but he does not have the offensive capabilities that Kawhi Leonard and or Jalen Brown has. Jalen Brown is a better player than Derek White, an overall player. So when I say overall, I'm talking about defensively. I'm talking about offensively. I'm talking about your talent, your skills, being able to put the ball in the bucket, the way you're able to put the ball in the bucket, the three-point, the mid-range, the post-up, the driving to the rim, like all that stuff has to be uh, taken into account. And Derek White, he's one of the players that you're going to put on the best offensive player on the opposing team, but then you're definitely going to lose something with Derek White offensively. Like if Derek White is your primary defensive player, then yeah, he can slow the he can slow the opposing team's best player uh, as much as he can, but you're not going to be asking anything of him offensively. And that's where Jalen Brown is the complete opposite. You can ask Jalen Brown to defend the best player on the opposing team, but then you can also expect Jalen Brown to contribute 20 points. So I get Jalen Brown, man. I get Jalen Brown for being upset, being disappointed, being frustrated. Um, and the, during the season, there was a the whole thing about Stephen A. Smith saying that Jalen Brown wasn't as marketable. And that's why he's not really regarded as one of the more popular players in the league. So I don't know, maybe Jalen Brown, maybe he's just caught up in the moment. And when he heard the news, he was just like, man, fuck this. Like he got super tight. I don't know. But this leads me to my next point. Why is nobody talking about Jalen Brunson? Why is nobody mentioning how Jalen Brunson is also the one that got snubbed? Jalen Brunson last summer played on the World Cup team where, embarrassingly, we didn't even make third place. Canada beat us for the third place uh, slot. They won the bronze, and we ended up in fourth place. But Jalen Brunson on that team, I believe he averaged like around 11 points, maybe like two and a half rebounds, four assists. But playing in the World Cup last summer aside, let's take a look at Jalen Brunson's numbers for the season that just happened. Jalen Brunson averaged 28.7 points, 6.7 assists, 3.6 rebounds last season, and he was named an all-star. So, and as far as those uh, points, so as far as the regular field goals attempted, he attempted, so he attempted 21 and a half shots. So 21 and a half, and he converted on 47.9, which is 48%. So he was basically 50% from the field. Now, three-pointers, he averaged 40% from three-point land on 6.8, which is seven attempts. Jalen Brunson also being regarded as one of, if not the better Knicks, the whole organization. Like, it's crazy how Jalen Brunson is already in that conversation. He still has a lot to prove. But Jalen Brunson, if you're an avid basketball fan, if you're an avid basketball junkie, you know that Jalen Brunson, what he's been able to do for the Knicks, changing the culture, changing what we expect from the Knicks. Jalen Brunson's first season, we went to the second round of the playoffs and we upset the Cleveland Cavaliers in the first round in five games. When nobody, I actually didn't expect, I, I, did, I did pick the Knicks to win, but I picked the Knicks to win in seven. I did not expect him to embarrass the Cleveland Cavaliers in five. And then this past season, we go to the second round, beating the 76ers in the first round, beating them in six. Now, whatever. You want to throw them, you want to throw the excuse that Embiid was uh, not healthy. Embiid is in the same conversation as Kawhi Leonard. He's never healthy. So I don't know what you want to do with that. But Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, like they were able to get past Philadelphia 76ers in the first round. Jalen Brunson did his thing. And we lost in the second round in seven games. We should have went to the Eastern Conference Finals. But again, we were decimated. We, we had skeletons out there on the floor. Jalen Brunson broke his hand. He messed up his foot in game two. Josh Hart had an abdominal muscle strain. Uh, Mitchell Robinson, he played a few games in the first round. And then uh, he just, and then he re-aggravated that foot injury. OJ and Anobi blew out his hamstring. Like we were, obviously Julius Randle messed up his shoulder in the, in the earlier part of the season. So he was off for the rest of the season. So we didn't have Julius Randle. So, there's that, but I don't understand how Jalen Brunson is not being part of the conversation as far as being snubbed. And of course, you know, I did a little bit of research because I love uh, knowing all these little nuggets. So I took a look at the all NBA first, second and third team for this past season that just happened. So the first team, we got Giannis, we got Luka, we got SGA, we got Jokic and we got Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, who's the only American player on the first team, which is crazy. But Jason Tatum, is he on Team USA? Yes, he's on Team USA. So now let's take a look at the second team. 
The second team, we got Brunson, we got Anthony Davis, we got KD, we got Anthony Edwards, and we got Kawhi Leonard. All Besides Jalen Brunson, all four of those players, even Kawhi Leonard, because Kawhi Leonard was on the team up until, what, 24 hours ago, 48 hours ago? So everybody on the second team is on Team USA. So save that piece of nugget because I'm going to come back to it. Now, the third team, we got Devin Booker, we got Steph Curry, we got Tyrese Halliburton, we got LeBron James, and we got DeMontis Sabonis. So everybody but DeMontis Sabonis, because obviously he's representing another country. He's not representing USA, and I believe it's Lithuania. Everybody on the third team is on Team USA. So if you take a look at all NBA first team, all NBA second team, all NBA third team, Jalen Brunson is the only player that's not on the roster. How insane is that? And in my opinion, Tyrese Halliburton on this team? Like, dude, you had a good first half of the season. And then I think it was in January where he strained his hamstring. After when he came back from his hamstring injury, he just wasn't the same player. And don't get me wrong. I like Halliburton's game. Like, if anything, he reminds me of a traditional point guard. Like, he likes to set up his teammates first rather than look for his. And I like his no looks. I like, I like the way he plays the game. I love it. But if we're taking if we're taking into account, like, your career and what have you done so far, what has Tyrese Halliburton done to, to be put on Team USA over Jalen Brunson? Tyrese Halliburton, this, this past season was his first time going into the playoffs. Jalen Brunson, he's been in the playoffs even before he was with the Knicks. He was in the playoffs with Dallas. Now, if you want to make the excuse that he was backing up Luka Doncic, so as far as Dallas Mavericks making it to the playoffs, it was more on the back of Luka Doncic. Like, okay, I'm not going to argue that. But Jalen Brunson, he actually did, I believe it was in the first round against Utah, Luka Doncic missed, I believe, two games, and Jalen Brunson started, and he kind of showed everybody what he was made of. Now, based off of those two games, he got that contract with the Knicks. Everybody was saying that the Knicks overpaid him, but obviously, the way Jalen Brunson has been playing, now the Knicks actually, you can say that that contract is actually, we, we got away with a, with a really good contract for Jalen Brunson. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that Jalen Brunson, I feel like nobody's really talking about how Jalen Brunson got snubbed. Jalen Brunson 100% deserves to be on this team. I'm always going to ride for Jalen Brunson, who's been the best Knicks player since Patrick Ewing. And yes, that's right. I said it. Carmelo Anthony, I don't, Melo could have been, been a great Nick. And uh, unfortunately, the circumstances, I feel like 50% was his fault, but the other 50% was Phil Jackson. The first 50%, where it was Carmelo Anthony's fault, like he came to the Knicks. And as far as, yeah, he definitely at the time in his prime, he was what a top three to five player in the league. But the only reason why he was on that list was because of how much of an offensive player he was, how he was able to put the ball in the bucket. Melo, in my opinion, I love Melo, man. He was one of my favorite players when he was in the league. Melo, in my opinion, gets super disrespected as far as just offensive players. If you're talking about strictly offense, take away defense, take away leadership, take away all the intangibles. If we're talking about just putting the ball in the bucket, Melo deserves to be in the conversation as being one of, if not the better players of all time. Melo's jab step, Melo's post up, Melo's mid range, Melo's three pointer, like Melo off the dribble. Melo was amazing when he was in his prime. But going back to Melo's time with the Knicks, like when he when he joined the Knicks, he was still in his prime. And in my opinion, I think Melo could have done a lot more. I think he could have just elevated that team a lot more. And the fact that he never really opened up his game, the fact he never really added more to his game, I get it that not everybody is going to be like LeBron, not everybody is going to be a natural leader. But the fact that like I didn't really, I didn't really see him try. Like it was just like I am who I am and I'm going to do what I do, which is cool. But I don't know, man. I just feel like he missed the boat. He could have really picked up the mantle and really, really could have become one of the better Knicks of all time. But he's not on that list for me. So that's why I think Jalen Brunson is ahead of Carmelo Anthony. And he's probably, depending on how his career ends, man, he could probably be right behind Patrick Ewing. I mean, Walt Clyde Frazier, uh, Willis Reed, like obviously those players are in a category of their own because they actually have championship ranks, two of them to be exact. So they're like in a category of their own. And then after that, Patrick Ewing is 100% number one. So if you take Willis Reed, if you take Walt Clyde Frazier, if you take Earl the Pearl Monroe, if you put them to the side and pretend like they never existed, Patrick Ewing 100% is number one. And then after that, I think Jalen Brunson is already in the conversation, but he needs to do more to solidify his legacy. So now let's talk about the actual game. Let's talk about the actual players, the roster, the roster development, all that. So we beat Canada 86-72. to 72, And before I dive into who played well and the lineups and what I saw from particular players, one thing I want to say is Dylan Brooks, yo, yo. Dylan Brooks, you got my respect, bro. Like, <laughs> Dylan Brooks going at LeBron James in an exhibition that has no no worth whatsoever. 
Like, yo, Dylan Brooks might be, he might be my favorite player in the league right now, man. He's going at LeBron and Devin Booker had a press conference after the game and he's walking right across the cameras and he's just completely interrupting Devin Booker's uh, press conference. Yo, Dylan Brooks, man, you got my respect, bro. Like you are who you are at all times and you're not going to change for anybody. And that's where, that's where you gain my respect. All right. But as far as last night, so Kevin Durant, I should mention, and I should preface that Kevin Durant didn't play because he's dealing with a calf injury. And that could be very interesting because we don't know how severe the calf injury is. And then on top of that, we also going to take into account that the Achilles, I'm not sure if it's the same leg. So hopefully it's not. But if it's the same leg, we also got to keep an eye on that because the calf is very close to the Achilles, obviously. And that was the that was the report and everybody talking about when he did uh, strain that calf when it was against the Toronto Raptors. So there's that. But Kevin Durant did not play. He's attending a calf injury. So last night's starting five, interesting, was Steph at the one. Devin Booker started at the two. Drew Holiday started at the three. LeBron at the four. And beat at the five. That's the starting five that they had for last night. But when KD comes back, my projected starting five, I got Steph at the one. I got Anthony Edwards at the two. I got KD at the three. I got LeBron at the four. And I got Embiid at the five. Now, I really want to focus on Anthony Edwards because that battle between Anthony Edwards and Devin Booker is interesting. Devin Booker, he does have, uh, I believe he has a gold medal. And so he has more experience with Team USA. But if we're talking about just the players themselves, who's a better player, who, who has the better skills, who has the more talent, I think anybody would be crazy to say that Anthony Edwards is not a better player than Devin Booker. Like, I'm sorry, Devin Booker, like you have more experience with you have more years under your belt in the NBA. You have a gold medal. So you have more experience with Team USA. But we're not we're not talking about experience right now. We're talking about who's the best player right now, who can put the ball in the bucket right now. And Anthony Edwards is a better player. So now with that projected starting five, which is my starting five, then we got Devin Booker coming off the bench. We got Anthony Davis. We got Bam Adebayo. We got Jason Tatum. We got Derek White. We got Tyrese Halliburton. And we got Drew Holiday coming off the bench. So last night, Anthony Edwards, I believe, led the team with 13 points, and he was coming off the bench. So there's that. But some things that I saw from the game. The first thing that I want to talk about, I want to talk about Embiid. Embiid looked like absolute dog shit. Like, he actually fouled out in the third quarter. So there's that. And part of the reason why it looked like he fouled out was because of his conditioning. Now, before starting this episode, I was trying to think and trying to think of excuses as to why Embiid looked the way he did last night. And the one thing I kept coming around to is that he was dealing with a knee injury and he was playing through that knee injury in the first round. So much respect to Joel Embiid for playing through it. And he was still, he, he was playing well. And in some camps, people would say that Joel Embiid, this is actually his best playoff showing, his best playoff outing. Since he's, been, since he's been going to the playoffs, which is crazy because he was playing on a hella bum knee. That's the reason why Embiid looked so bad last night because he's probably been rehabbing and going to physical therapy for that knee. So he hasn't really been able to actually work on his game. And then that's another thing. Uh, the Olympics is FIBA rules and FIBA rules are different from the NBA. The ball is actually different. One of the different rules is that if the ball's on the rim and it's just dancing around on the rim, the anybody could go on the rim and try to tip it in. Anybody can go on the rim and try to like, hit it out. So if the ball's on the on the rim on the cylinder and if it's just circling around, an offensive player, a defensive player could literally go on the rim and just tap it out. Obviously that's different from the NBA. The paint, the NBA paint is I believe bigger than the FIBA FIBA paint. For me personally, it looked really bad. Um but again, he's he's he was dealing with his knee and I believe this is his first time playing in any FIBA rules situation. So there's that and on top of that, it's an exhibition, so I don't want to kill him. I don't want to go crazy. But, yo, when, when, when are people going to start talking about Joel Embiid being in the same conversation as Kawhi Leonard? When are, when are people going to start talking about Joel Embiid as far as like, yo, you're 30 years old, you have not made it past the first round, and you are an injury-prone player, bro. Every time the playoffs are about to start, it's a broken hand, it's a broken bone in your face, it's your back, it's your foot, it's your knee. Like, yo, Joel Embiid, bro, like, when you're fully healthy, look at this past season. When he was fully healthy, before he went down with the meniscus tear, and I believe it was in Golden State where somebody landed on him, like he was, he was gonna get his uh, back-to-back MVP. That's how much of an amazing season he had, and he also put up seventy-three points on Victor Wembanyama. Obviously, Victor Wembanyama, he was a rookie, and he's like what hundred pounds soaking wet. So Joel Embiid took advantage of it. But like Joel Embiid, when he's fully healthy, man, he I think he might be the best big man I've ever seen in my life. That's including Shaq. That's including Hakeem. I didn't see Kareem play. I just seen highlights, but I've seen tapes, obviously. 
But like, and I didn't see Hakeem play because he was uh, when his last season, I believe, was in Toronto, and I was like probably nine years old. So I didn't get to see Prime Hakeem, but I did get to see Prime Shaq. And ever since Prime Shaq, who the big the big man that we have, the big man that I could talk about, I could talk about a Tim Duncan, I could talk about a Jokic, I can talk about a, a Dwight Howard. Like all the big men that I can talk about that I've seen in my lifetime, like Joel Embiid 100% when he's healthy. He's the best big out of all of them. Joel Embiid is, I call him Inception, the Inception, because he is the second dream. Hakeem Olajuwon, he is the second version of Hakeem Olajuwon, and Hakeem Olajuwon's nickname is the Dream. Like he has a better shot than Hakeem. He has a better ball handling than Hakeem. He has, I don't know if he has better post moves, and I definitely don't know if he has better footwork, but they're probably on par with Hakeem Olajuwon. And it just sucks that Joel Embiid is like he's always dealing with something. I want to see Joel Embiid actually have a full season from game one up until however far they go into the playoffs or if they make it to the actual finals. I want to see him be healthy for a full entire season. And I don't know if I'm going to get that. Now, aside from Joel Embiid, I also want to talk about just like the play. Like it was it was sloppy. And again, the excuse that I have for Team USA is I think they've only had like what four practices because training camp started at the beginning of this week, maybe. And they've only had four practices. They probably only had like two or three scrimmages going up against Team USA Select. So they're still feeling each other out. They're still feeling where a particular player wants the ball, how they like to attack the rim or how they like to just approach the game. So there's a lot of like intangibles that goes into the game. But from what I saw last night, like I wasn't 100 percent confident going into the Olympics. And that's another thing. Like, I don't know, man. Is it just me or the roster itself? Like the NBA media, they're saying that this is the best team assembled since the dream team. And. I get it. The Redeem team, like after you look at the starting five, you have players like Carlos Boozer. You have players like Tayshaun Prince. You have players like Michael Red. Like I get it. You have some players that as, if you're taking the totality of the team, it's going to be knocked down. But but saying that this is the best assemblance of talent since the Dream Team, where the Dream Team starting five like was all Hall of Famers. But then you got Christian Leitner. You got Chris Mullen, got John Stockton, and I get it. Like, I mean, you look at the names, like, yeah, just names alone. Yeah, okay, this, this, yeah, might be the best team that's assembled since the Dream Team. But then take a look deeper and think about their games. Like, Devin Booker, like, what has Devin Booker proved in his NBA career so far? Like, he went to the NBA Finals, but Chris Paul was was the leader slash best player on that team. Devin Booker, since Chris Paul left, he's been to the playoffs, but he's been to the playoffs being knocked out in the first round, I believe. So, he, I don't know. To me, Devin Booker hasn't really proved a lot. LeBron James, proven. I don't got to talk about him. Kevin Durant, proven. I don't have to talk about him. Stephen Curry, proven. I'm going to talk about him. Joel Embiid, I just finished talking about, like, he's never been able to get past the first round. And yeah, the skills and the talent, it's all there. But what does he actually prove? Drew Holiday is a solidified all-star in his role. Drew Holiday is a role player. Anthony Davis is another one. Anthony Davis has not proved anything as far as being the best player on your team. Anthony Davis, when he was the the best player on the team all those years with the New Orleans Pelicans, it was a disappointing season after disappointing season. And the only good season that he had was when Rajon Rondo was a part of the team and they upset the Portland Trailblazers in that first round. And then I think they lost in the second round to the Warriors. But Anthony Davis, since he's come to the Lakers, LeBron James has still been the best player on the team, which is crazy because he's about to turn 40 in December. And... Looking forward, when LeBron James retires, which is finally going to look like soon because LeBron's an alien, like, the Lakers are going to depend on Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, he just had a really good season playing, I mean, like, 70 to 75 games. But prior to this season, like, he's been missing a lot of games. So you're, you're going to be depending on an injury-prone player. And he hasn't proven anything. He hasn't proven anything as far as being the best player on the team. Anthony Edwards is still super young, so he still has a lot to prove. But so far, look, he already made it to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, he got he got his boots smoked by Dallas Mavericks and Luka Doncic. But but as far as skills and talent, like Anthony Edwards, like, yeah, he's he's a problem. He's going to be a problem. Tyrese Halliburton, like, he's not your offensive weapon. He's more of somebody that's going to just facilitate and try to get everybody in their right positions. I mean, can he put the ball in the bucket? Yeah. But is that his strong suit? No. Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum finally got that monkey off his back, but not really because he he still has to win finals MVP. I'm going down the list, man, and you can make an excuse for some for everybody on this list. Everybody on this list, which maybe you could do the same thing with a dream team besides Jordan. I mean, Barkley didn't win a championship at that time. Patrick Ewan didn't win a championship at that time. Carl Malone didn't win a championship at that at that time. 
I mean, Ma it was, Magic was already like, what, 40 years old. Bird was already like a bad back Larry. So, but by the time Bird and Magic went to the Olympics, they both had what, like three to five championships. So I get it. Like Bam at a bio, um, to, to round out the roster, I just didn't mention Bam at a bio who, I don't know. Bam at a bio hasn't really proven anything either. Jimmy Butler has been the best player on that team since Bam and Jimmy linked up. So I'm just saying, man, I don't know. I just like, I'm looking at the roster and like, am I, I'm not as a hundred percent confident going into these Olympics. Like, I think the rest of the world has caught up. You're talking about Serbia. You're talking about Jokic. You're talking about Germany, who actually beat USA in the World Cup last summer. You got Dennis Schroeder looking like Michael Jordan in international games. You got France with Wembanyama, and they have a whole bunch of NBA players. You got Canada. I mean, we ended up beating them in the exhibition game, but Canada's roster is super good. The whole, I think the whole roster is NBA players. Dwight Powell, SGA, Dylan Brooks, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Lou Dort. But going back, but going back to the game last night, USA versus Canada, it was their first game together. It was their first exhibition game as a warm-up to go into the Olympics. And just watching the game, just watching how everybody was moving, it's crazy to me how LeBron James still looks like the best player on the floor. LeBron James is 39 years old right now. He's turning 40 in December. He still looks like the best player on the floor. He was getting up and down the floor like his life depended on it. The Steph Curry and LeBron James alley-oop connection, that was magical. I think it's going to be a lot more games that are going to be a lot more competitive with like two to three minutes left in a game than people expect. And the one thing that I like is we got Steph Curry, we got KD, we got LeBron, we got these players. Those three players alone, I trust with the ball. And out of those three, I would, I'd pick KD to be with the ball. But going into the Olympics, USA opens up against Serbia and Nikola Jokic. They're part of their group. After that, they play the South Sudan, which is part of the group. South Sudan, I don't really think they have anybody. But then Puerto Rico, they play again as part of their group. Puerto Rico, they have a bunch of NBA players on their team. Jose Alvarado, Grand Theft Alvarado is on that team. And then the rest of the games that are showcases that are like warm-ups. So Monday, July 15th, we're going up against Australia. Uh, Wednesday, July 17th, we're going up against Serbia. So we're actually going up against somebody that's we're actually going to play in the Olympics. Saturday, July 20th, we're going to be going up against South Sudan, which is, again, another team that's part of our uh, group in the Olympics, which is interesting. Why are we going to play them in an uh, exhibition game so that we can show them what we have? That's interesting. But then the last tune-up game we have is Monday, July 22nd, and we're going up against Germany. Again, like I mentioned, Germany, the team that just knocked us out of the World Cup last summer. So, man, there's just, I don't know, man. I'm just There's a lot of questions that I have talking about this uh, USA group going into the Olympics. But I love, 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 love this time of year. Every four years, we get to see the best players in the NBA or supposedly the best players in the NBA being put together. And we get to see the likes of LeBron, Steph, KD, and probably those three players. This is probably the last Olympics. And before I wrap up, one thing that I love about the Olympics is the Olympics happen. And then that next season... We always see one player just have that huge leap. And when I say leap, I'm talking about they have a really good season. That's, that's probably putting them in the MVP conversation. There's countless examples that I can point to you. But if Jalen Brunson was part of this team, man, that's another reason why I'm a little frustrated that Jalen Brunson wasn't really being uh, brought up in the conversation as being snubbed because Kawhi Leonard dropped out because he's soft. But, but if Jalen Brunson was a part of this team and he was able to soak up game from LeBron, from KD, from Steph. Like, he was able to soak up game from them and then bring it to the Knicks, which we have Mikael Bridges coming onto the team. Like, the amount of game that he saw how LeBron was uh, preparing for the game. He saw how Steph Curry warmed up. He saw how KD warmed up. Like, all these intangibles that go into being a player, he's, he'll be able to bring that to the New York Knicks, man. And going back to my point, as far as, like, after the Olympics, there's always that one player that has that massive leap and has that massive jump. Like, the first player that comes to mind is actually a former Nick. So in 2008, the Redeem team, we won, we won the gold, we beat Spain, and then Carmelo Anthony, who was still with the Denver Nuggets, he actually had an amazing season. He brought the Denver Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals, and who did he go up against? He went up against Kobe. They lost in six games. And, and that season, Carmelo Anthony was part of the MVP conversations. In 2012, when we won the gold, KD was a part of that team. And I think the next season, KD won his MVP in the 2012-2013 season, or maybe even 2013-2014 season. But KD won his MVP, I think, shortly after his, uh, his appearance with the Olympic team. There's always that one player who makes the leap, man. And I'm very interested and I'm very curious to see who's going to be that player next season taking that leap. If I had to put my money on somebody, I think I might put it on Anthony Edwards, man. Because Anthony Edwards... 
and and the Minnesota Timberwolves, you can tell that after they beat the Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference semifinals, you can tell that that was the championship. They literally celebrated, and then they they realized that they had to play one more round in order to get to the finals, and they completely shit the bed. They were not prepared. Uh, Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks, they smoked the boots off of Minnesota Timberwolves, and 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 during that and then during that series, like Anthony Edwards, like I don't know, maybe he was fatigued. I don't know, maybe he was tired, but he just he just wasn't the same as dominant player as he was against the Denver Nuggets. So. Now that he has that experience under his belt, and then in the same summer, he's going to be playing alongside the likes of KD, LeBron, Steph, like Jason Tatum, who's won a championship. So now he's going to be able to soak up game. I think Anthony Edwards might be that guy, man. I think he's going to be the one to come back next season. And like he, I think he might get that MVP trophy because he already has it. As far as talent, as far as, as far as talent, he might be the most talented player on this team. So we'll see, guys. But that's it for today's episode, guys. I want to say thank you so much for checking it out. Before I wrap up this episode, I want to remind you to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. If you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you're listening to right now, stop, rate, review, and subscribe. That'll be a big help. If you are watching my ugly mug on YouTube, please remember to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That'll be a really, really big help. But until next time, guys, I'll check you on the next episode of the Time Flies Podcast. I'm out, baby. Go Knicks. We out, baby.